In this chapter three video on stoichiometry and chemical equations, I will teach you theoretical yield. So the theoretical yield is the amount of product that you would by calculation make from a given amount of reactant. In other words, it's the amount of product that you should theoretically calculatedly make. So the theoretical yield is determined completely from the limiting reactant, which is the reactant that runs out first. The reactant or reactants that are not the limiting reactant are called the excess reactant or excess reactants because they're added in excess. We sometimes abbreviate excess with the letters X and S because it's shorthand easier. Now, in order to understand the limiting reactant a little bit better, I'm going to use the bicycle example. So let's pretend that you own a bicycle factory that makes bicycles so simply that it requires only two different ingredients or reactants, the frame and the wheels. You have to add one frame together with two wheels in order to yield or produce one bicycle. Make sense? Very simple. Now let's ask some questions. If you have two frames and two wheels, that's all you have, which reactant, the frame or the wheels, runs out first, and how many bicycles can you make? By extension, same question as before, except with four frames and four wheels. And after that, what would happen if you had eight frames and 15 wheels? Or 10 frames and 22 wheels? Well, let's begin by taking a look at question A. In that scenario, you have two frames and two wheels. Which of these reactants would run out first and how many bicycles would you end up making? Well, as you can well imagine, each bicycle requires two wheels and all you have is two wheels. So you take two wheels and you fasten them to one of your frames. When you're done doing that, you make one total bicycle. That's all you get. You also end up with one leftover frame. Can you use that frame to make bicycles? No, because you don't have any more wheels. All you have is two wheels. So the wheels in this case run out first and the total number of bicycles that you make is just one and you have one leftover frame. Does that make sense? We would say in the scenario that the wheels are the limiting reactant, the reactant that runs out first and the frames in this scenario are added in excess. It stands to reason too that you would run out of wheels first because it requires twice as many wheels to make a bicycle as it does frames. Now to the next example, what if you had four frames and four wheels? Well, similar to the previous example, if you have four wheels, you can make two bicycles because each bicycle requires two total wheels. But once you're done making those two bicycles in the process consuming or using up two of your frames, you cannot make any more because you're all out of wheels. So you end up with two extra frames left over that cannot be turned into bikes because you have no more wheels. In other words, your wheels run out first and are therefore your limiting reactant. You have two leftover frames, therefore your frames in this scenario are your excess reagent. I invite you then on your own to contemplate and answer the same question in two other scenarios. What if you had eight frames and 15 wheels? And what if you had 10 frames and 22 wheels? So my whole purpose in teaching you the principle of finding the limiting reactant is to help you understand how to calculate a theoretical yield. In other words, to calculate a reaction's theoretical yield, you have to identify the limiting reactant, the reactant that runs out first, because everything is determined by the limiting reactant. In order to do so, you have to follow these steps. One, balance the chemical equation using principles that we discussed in another video that's floating over my head somewhere or linked to in the description below. Two, convert everything to moles. And three, divide each reactant's mole amount by its coefficient. In other words, moles divided by coefficients. Now, when you do this, the smallest numerical answer wins. In other words, the smallest answer is the limiting reactant. Now, you'll notice that the way I've written these steps here gives us the mnemonic BCD, which I made it myself. Balance the chemical equation, convert everything to moles, and divide your mole amounts by coefficients. This process is simple, and it will help you identify your limiting reactant without any mistakes every single time. Now, if you don't like BCD, there is an alternative way of being able to identify the limiting reactant. In this way, you can just separately calculate out 
how many moles of product you would form individually from each of the reactants. When you do this, whichever reactant produces the smallest number of moles of product is the limiting reactant. Now, just so you know, sometimes problems will identify in their wording one of the reactants as being added in excess, which occasionally is abbreviated with the letters XS <laughs> for short. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Anyway, in such cases, the reactant that is not added in excess is your limiting reactant. So you do not have to go through the full BCD process in order to identify your limiting reactant because you already know what it is. However, even in such examples, you still do have to do the B and C parts of BCD, just not the D part. In other words, you do have to balance your chemical equation and you have to convert everything to moles. Got it? Good. So how in the world does all of this information help us to calculate theoretical yield? Well, once you identify your limiting reactant, you then just use the balanced equations coefficients to identify the theoretical yield of the product in question. Let's see if we can tackle this by taking a look at a lecture question. When benzene, which has this formula, reacts with bromine, Br2, bromobenzene is obtained or formed according to this balanced equation. So here's our question. When 30 grams of benzene react with excess Br2, what is the theoretical yield of bromobenzene? And separately, as a question you can work on your own, when 20 grams of Br2 react with excess benzene, what's a theoretical yield of HBr? Now, I'm not going to show you the answer to part B, but I will show you the answer to part A. Starting now! Now, as it turns out, <laughs> this question is actually exactly the same as one we worked in an earlier video, which is linked to in the description below. In other words, because this question specifically tells us which reactant is added in excess, in this case, the Br2, we already know that the C6H6 benzene is the limiting reactant. See, the question told us that the Br2 is added in excess. So by default, the other reactant, C6H6, is the limiting reactant. Thus, everything is calculated from C6H6. Again, we already did this problem earlier, but you probably didn't know at the time that you were doing a theoretical yield problem, did you? But you totally were. The process that we went through for this question earlier was a theoretical yield. When we obtained the amount or number of moles and grams of bromobenzene we would obtain, that was the theoretical yield of bromobenzene. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Let's take a look then at another problem. For this equation right here, which is balanced, if you react two moles of H2 with one mole of O2, how many moles of H2 would you produce? And separately, if you react four moles of H2 and one mole of O2, which reagent runs out first? And lastly, if you react four moles of H2 with 12 moles of O2, which reagent runs out first? And how many moles of H2O would you theoretically make? I invite you to attempt these on your own first, and then if you like, you can watch my answer videos, which are linked to in the description below.